Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me for another week of these uh, daily devotionals or morning devotionals, whichever you prefer to call them. Uh, obviously, some of you see them at different times of the day, but uh, you know, it's just a blessing to me that you take the time to follow along and I hope these are helpful for you. That's the ultimately the goal is that they help you and me to keep focus on the things that are most important. Uh, we live in a societal circumstance right now where there are so many distractions, so many things that really are attractive and call for our attention, it's easy for us to lose focus and forget what is most important. And essentially, as we go through uh, particularly these uh, qualifications of not only spiritual leaders, but also uh, really indicators that somebody is mature in their faith, uh, it's important for us to realize that these are the things in the long run which will have the greatest impact upon how our life goes than all the other things that we worry about. I mean, we worry about uh, our financial stability and wh how, what our future financial will be all about. Um, and uh, But the most critical thing that really affects our life is going to be our relationships, beginning with our relationship with God. And these qualifications, or these characteristics, if you will, uh, do not come by simply focusing on them individual as if you're kind of developing a personal discipline. I'm going to focus on doing this until I become good at it, and then I'll move on to the next thing. Uh, they are rather much more like the outgrowth of the seeds of the Spirit being planted in your heart and your mind, and they naturally grow up. They begin to reveal themselves. We call them the fruits of the Spirit, if you will, because that's essentially what they are, that fruit is not conscious of its growth. It is simply responding to the nature of the root that's planted in the ground. And so as we implant God's word into our hearts and into our minds, and we meditate upon it and we pray over it, it's like we're fertilizing and watering those truths in our life. Uh, they just begin to naturally sprout up in our life and express themselves. And if you're like me, and I'm sure you probably are, that there have been many times where there have been these really what seemed like very subtle changes in my personality or character or whatever that I didn't even notice them, but yet those people who are most closely associated and more directly impacted by them, particularly like family members, become aware of that and see that God has done this thing in you, this change. And I think that's where a lot of the power of our testimony comes as Christians, that we need to let people know that we're Christians at one way or another and share that aspect of who we are and our faith and all. But at the same time, it's <clears throat> you are like the gospel that they read. And as they see you not trying to be somebody who is perfect, but rather you see yourself as some, somebody who has been forgiven, but not only forgiven, but also has been fixed by God. Because I always refer back to 1 John 1, 9, where he says, if we confess our sins, he's just and faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Uh, I like to explain it by, by saying that when we come to that place of a repentant lifestyle, we're, we're living in, in continuous acknowledgement that we are sinners who need God's grace. Not only does he forgive us of our sins, but he also starts fixing those things that need fixing in our life. And matter of fact, there's just not a single one of us who doesn't need a lot of fixing. Uh, we all come from one kind of broken place or another. There's no exception to the rule. And so what God does is he instructs us. And so we often uh, recognize that something is broken in our life because the Holy Spirit opens up the scriptures to our understanding. And suddenly we're looking at what he says should be the thing that characterizes us. And we realize that it is not. It's not really our, our behavioral pattern. And so we say, God, forgive me for that and change that in me. And when we do that, it's like that very act of saying, taking that word and planting it in the soil and praying over that and asking God to forgive it. It's inviting the fertilization and the watering of God's spirit uh, in that area of our life. And it's just a matter of time before we'll begin to see uh, the thing bloom up in a new way. That doesn't mean you won't have crises along the way or times where you fall short or fall back into those same things. But it's that idea that continuance, that steadfast in continuance in recognizing that something is an area that God needs to change and inviting him to do that, being open to that, is really where our lives become transformed. 
And one of the questions I had after I first got saved is if God uh, you know, knows everything about me and if I'm saved from the moment I believe in him, why doesn't he just take me from this life and not make me go through all of those struggles? And I think it's uh, important for us to realize it is the very fact that our lives change, that effect of the Holy Spirit in our life that really is the most profound testimony to the world around us. That I know with a lot of my family and friends that the thing that uh, really made them stop and, and begin to accredit the gospel as being a real thing was they saw the transformational effect it had upon my life and, and my wife's life and other people around us. And so this becomes really, really central. But in the passage where we were continuing, where we're looking at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, talking about the qualifications of spiritual leaders, he says in verse 4 that one of the things is that he must be able to manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. And then he goes on in verse 5 and says, if anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? And this is really, I think, sets up a, a, a certain, a really important sense of priority. Now, when I first got in the ministry, I'm afraid to say that the way that I was instructed by those who were endeavoring to disciple me, uh, particularly in the ministry, was they said, well, it's God first, then the ministry, and then your family. And uh, I look at that at, with great sorrow and sadness because what happened was it meant basically that if you're serving God and the ministry required your attention, that you put your family at the end of the list. I mean, you gave them the leftovers that you had from all of your time and your energy, and in some degrees, even your financial concerns for their welfare. And uh, it took a long time for me to come to realize, wait a minute, that's, that's a distorted, imbalanced way of looking at it. I think, in fact, it wasn't until I was really tasked to do a lot of teaching and family and ministry that I began to really see in the scriptures and from a lot of other input that that was really a, a distorted way of looking at things. And really, it, it manifests itself in the, the basic unhappiness. I remember at one point, I uh, the reason I, I left a ministry that I was involved with and, and took another position was because I realized that they kept me busy 24-7. I mean, it was like I was working all the time. And I remember a kid saying, why don't we move so we can do this other thing so that uh, we can have our dad around once in a while. And so I say that, you know, it's really important. Now, what's the problem for many people is that they don't put God first. They may put their career first. And it's a danger if you put your family before God. It's always these kind of a balancing acts that we have to maintain. But the key is really, or the formula is really simple. We say, God first, then comes our family. That's the place where we live out. Notice how Paul makes a correlation between a spiritual leader leading the church and the way he leads his family. He says, if he can't lead his family, why would we entrust to him the church, which is really prototypical of the family? And I think that's, again, when we see a lot of the uh, abuse that goes on within Christianity. And, and sadly, there's, it seems like that as people begin to experience celebrity or are in pursuit of being great successes in ministry, that they often do it to the neglect of the congregation of the people that they're serving. It becomes, in other words, they become more about developing their own brand than they are in really uh, ministering to the flock. They, instead of saying, he who is the greatest will be the servant of all, we get ourselves in a place where we think everybody's there to serve us and to serve our welfare. And I think this, this really, this twisting is part of the cultural dynamic. And one of the things I think that gets overlooked by many of us in pastoral ministry or position to leadership is that we focus first upon worshiping God. And then we focus on our families. And then the church is the outward expression of that, uh, that devotion to, our, to God and to family. Family, we know, and I've been teaching on this recently, that is the foundation upon which all of human society, civilization as we know it, is founded on the family. And the society goes the direction, a nation goes the direction of the families. And so in our current situation in America, we see families are collapsing all around us. Then we uh, realize that what's really happening is that the foundation is falling apart. 
So when you have a, a case where only 18% of the U.S. population live in uh, a home where there's a mom and a dad and children, only 18%, and most of them are all different kinds of uh, categories of, of cohabitation or single parenting, which is a huge issue, well, you're not surprised that you're beginning to see a lot of disorder within society. But this is the focus that Paul begins. He says it begins with this idea of recognizing that God is the central focus of your life and the first place where we need to express our ministry in the world is towards our family and those relationships. It comes down to the amount of time that we're really will, willing to adequ, uh, adequately uh, dedicate to raising and training them in the ways of the Lord. Well, out of time, but again, tomorrow we'll, we'll pick up this conversation. God bless you and go in His grace.